So I recently picked up a brand new Jeep Wrangler JL. As much as I love this vehicle, I do find the sound system to be, well, a little bit lacking and in need of improvement. As many of us know, the key to a great audio system starts at the source. Now luckily, the factory radio in this car does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but in my opinion, that's about where the benefits end. The sound controls are lacking, the display is small, and I don't have RCA signal outputs that I can use to send signal to aftermarket amplifiers. I need something that can give me better sound, give me options for adding more cameras and for adding amplifiers, and is easier to use. So I started doing some research and that's when I learned that Stinger, a company that has long been known for making quality car audio gear, is making a factory integration kit that allows you to add their heightened aftermarket head unit to a Wrangler JL or Gladiator JT. I reached out to Stinger and they were cool enough to sponsor this video. So in this video, we're gonna be doing an unboxing. We're gonna walk through the simple installation procedure and we're gonna put this head unit to the test. Was I able to get a special offer for you guys, car audio fabrication fans, in this video? We're gonna find out. Let's get into it. Now, when we purchase the radio replacement kit, we're actually going to get these two different packages. Stinger sells the Heighten as a standalone aftermarket head unit, so it has its own packaging. And then in this packaging are all the integration parts to actually integrate the Heighten into the Jeep. Let's take a look at the Heighten radio first, and then we'll move on to the integration kit. So looking at the packaging here, on this face we have a general overview of what this radio is. On this face we have a little bit better understanding of what this radio is going to look like. And then on this face we get all the different features for this radio. When we open up the packaging here, they've got some nice packing foam in here, keeping the screen nice and safe during shipment. And then it looks like there's five different main categories here. Looks like we have the brain unit, we have a mounting bracket, a rubber boot that covers the transition from the dash to the back side of the radio. We also get this box here. This is filled with various wiring harnesses and other small parts. The final thing in the packaging here is what I think is gonna be my favorite part, the screen. Now since the screen is the main thing that we're obviously gonna see once this is fully installed in the video, I think it's important to really analyze this and I wanna give you guys my first impressions. First off, I don't know about you guys, but there have been screens in my experience that I've held before that are light and they just feel kind of dinky and cheap. And that is not the case with this screen. This definitely has some weight to it. It feels solid. It feels like a well-made piece. If I feel all the edges here, it feels like you know all the parts really come together nicely. I feel like it's engineered and manufactured really well. I had to, of course, give the knob a twist right away. It has a nice tactile feeling. It kind of snaps to different positions. This button, they all have a nice satisfying push. On the back side, we see that we have two different wiring connections that will connect to the brain box. And then we see that we also have a variety of different connections. Again, this allows them to design this screen to be used with multiple different vehicle integration kits by having these different mounting points here. I'm imagining that we'll only be using a certain mounting point that works best for the Jeep. So now let's take a look at the brain box here. Now in contrast to the screen, this is really compact and small, which is what you want because this is going to need to fit in our restrictive small dash. On the back side here, they've given us a label that has the pin out. We don't need to be super concerned with this because we're gonna be able to just plug and play, but this is nice to know what each of those wires is. On the back side, you can see all of our different connections here. They have a little pigtail for the antenna connection. But otherwise, again, I like the worksmanship of this. It feels solid. There's nothing really shaking around in there or rattling. This has the feel of a high-end product. You'll also notice on the front here is a small little SD card slot that says for navigation only. There is an available upgrade that you can buy the little SD card that goes in here. That gives you the ability to have navigation at all times without using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Now in that small box we get quite a few different things. A bunch of different wiring harnesses and different small fasteners and mounting brackets. This is where we also get the installation guide, a link for our user guide download, and our registration card. Now I remember when I first got into car audio, I remembered when I would see all these connections, I would get intimidated. I'm like, holy cow, that is a lot of different wires to connect, but I promise you, it's really not that big a deal. All of these connectors are made differently, so they can really only be plugged into one spot on our brain. Additionally, some of the connections that you would normally need to make for a car radio install, those are just going to be plug and play with our vehicle integration kit. 
So don't be intimidated. I promise we're gonna get through this, but if we do have any questions, we can always contact their friendly technical support team. Just to really quickly go through everything that is here, we have our different RCA connections for sending an output signal to aftermarket amplifiers. We also have video outputs. We have video inputs because we can add a bunch of different cameras on this unit. We have an external microphone connection for our Bluetooth hands-free calls and for activating Siri and Google Assistant. All of the connections you would have for a traditional radio, a Sirius XM tuner connection, an SWI, an external IR connection. They have an external GPS antenna here along with a magnetic mounting plate. Two connections to go between the brain and the screen. And then, like I mentioned before, all the fasteners and mounting hardware. And then check this out, guys. How classy is this? They even give us a little microfiber cleaning rag so that we can clean our screen and keep it nice and pristine. So that is everything that comes with the Heighten. Now let's take a look at the vehicle specific stuff for our Wrangler JL or our Gladiator GT. So the integration and installation kit here, you can see that we have some really nice color printing on the packaging. They have a description of all the different details and all the different vehicle options that we are going to make sure we retain by adding this aftermarket unit. I'll be going through all of these and showing you guys the juicy details once we get this installed. Open up the packaging here, a link to download the user guide. I downloaded the user guide here, it was really easy to do so, I just took a picture of that QR code and I imagine the reason that they did this is because they want to be able to release firmware updates for the Heighten and for the integration kit so that way they can update their user guide here to match and you can see that all the images are high quality and they are color. Next up here we have the installation guide and this guide is more for the installer settings. This references more of the technical information for things like I mentioned like upgrading the firmware, for doing a screen reset, and other programming settings. This gives us another QR code that I've pulled up here and this is more of the step-by-step -step installation procedure. So again you'll see very high quality pictures here that we can easily see and they've identified each different part that we need to access. And we can go step by step through this procedure. Everything is well documented. They've really thought of everything here. I mean, check out, even on this picture, they've shown where you should roughly route this particular wire in this step. They show close-ups of each of the different connections. They show close-ups of the different fastener locations. I've seen a ton of manuals in my day and I will tell you I am excited to install this because it looks like they've made my life very easy. So those are the manuals. Let's get more into the actual parts here. You can see that there's a couple of different wiring harnesses on top here. These wires are vehicle specific which will allow the brain box from the Heighten to connect to our actual vehicle wiring. As we continue the unboxing here, we're gonna to start to see some additional brain box devices. Remember that in the Jeep, there is a lot going on in the data signal, and we need a way for our new aftermarket head unit to communicate to the data signal of the vehicle. And these different brain boxes are going to allow the aftermarket head unit to do so. So this one is called the Pack Link. There's the radio installation adapter. This one here is the HD camera retention module. And I'm looking through the rest here. I don't see any more little brain boxes. There is this little box here. This actually has a speaker in it. This will allow us to keep some chimes. We've got more wiring connections here and you can see that each one is labeled really well with a part number that we can reference in the instructions. More wiring harnesses well labeled. And now we're going to start to get into some of the plastic pieces. These are the pieces that are going to make the Heighten actually fit and match the dash of our Jeep. This is for the smaller L of 8 screen that we could technically use, but for our application here, we have the much larger version for the Heighten. Here we go, so this is our piece for the Heighten. This matches up with the dash, and if we look really quick, we can see that our screen fits really nice inside. Holy cow, I really like that fitment. Not loose at all, not jiggling. Very well made. A couple of remainder pieces in here, another mounting bracket. This bracket is going to be for the brain itself inside the dash, which will mount onto the back side of our screen adapter. And then they've given us some zip ties to use to secure our wiring, along with some additional mounting hardware pieces, some factory clips that we'll be using. And these look to be an adhesive of some sort 
for something during the install. So now we have everything out of the integration and installation kit so we can move on to the installation process. Now I do want to mention that Stinger did a awesome job making their own how-to video showing every single step of the install. Because these guys did such an awesome job making this video, I want to do something a little bit different and I'd rather give you guys my feedback as I do this install on things that I like about the install procedure or things that I find a little bit more challenging. So I'm going to start following along along with this video and that PDF that we downloaded earlier, and I'm gonna give you guys updates along the way. So right off the bat, the first thing I like about this install and something I really like about Jeeps, if you're a Jeep owner, you know, it's not really that complex to take apart the Jeep, so we only need a few basic tools. Plastic pry tool, a Phillips screwdriver, some wire crimpers, we've got 10 millimeter and seven millimeter ratchets, along with Torx, T20, and T25. The installation manual and video do a good job of breaking everything out into parts. As an example, this first part here is six steps of getting the radio out. So I'm gonna review with you guys after each part. So the first part of the installation procedure here was quite simple. I started with removing that knee bolster and then I moved on to removing this control panel. That gives us access to two different screws that hold in the radio trim. We can remove those and then we can remove the four screws that actually hold the radio in. Next, we were able to pull out the radio and then we could start removing each of these connections. Now these connections will be a little bit different depending on the stock radio that you have, but for the most part, each of these connectors has a little tab that you have to kind of push on in order to release the connector so it can be pulled and removed. And this main connector here, as shown in their directions, you just swivel this up and out of the way and then you can pull it to remove it. Next, I needed to prep the wiring path for the GPS antenna. This required removing the speaker grill and then the A-pillar cover. I noticed that the A-pillar cover definitely takes a good yank to get it out. Then there were a couple of Torx fasteners that I had to take out to remove this plastic panel here. This is the driver's side headrest right here and it's hard to see, but there's a piece of metal up here underneath the roof. That's where we're gonna have the GPS antenna mounted just inside of here. So that's going to allow the wire to run through the path that we just cleared up. The center console has a USB port inside that we need access to, so this step was really easy. I just undid these two Torx bolts here and then popped off the back of the panel, giving me access. Next, I removed the glove box, no tools required, just pushed on two different tab areas and pulled it on out. With those steps complete, that's everything that we need removed in order to gain access for the different wiring paths. Now, I also took off the front tops of the Jeep. You don't have to do this. I did it just to have a little bit more light for the camera, but you might want a little bit more light while you're working, so that's up to you. We can now move on to prepping all of our radio pieces. The first step in prepping the radio is getting the screen mounted to its plastic. Included with the high 10 are several different screw sizes. We're not going to be using them all. We want to make sure that we use the correct size when we're attaching this, the 12 millimeter ones, so we want to measure them using a ruler. After that, we just need to mount these provided clips that will hold this assembly into the dash. Next, we're going to make the bracket that will hold the brain assembly and connect inside of the dash. And to do that, we need to attach these plastic side pieces using these screws. There's definitely a lot of screws included, so I was a little confused at first, but for this step here, we want to use these pan head screws. I can see where it might be easy to get confused with these other ones, but notice that these are a fine thread and the head is different. As a side note, because I could see this being a little bit confusing for those of us that are new to this as well, you want to make sure there's a little number here. It's hard to see on camera, make sure that that's facing you. And when that's facing you, this piece here is labeled RH. So that's gonna be on the right hand side. And then this plastic piece is labeled LH. There's an example of that lettering right there. So when this number is facing you, this is right hand and then this is left hand. Next up, I mounted the radio installation adapter using the included zip ties, that was easy enough. And then those pieces of adhesive that we saw earlier, one of those goes on the back of the pack link and we stick it in place. Now we need to mount the brain to this assembly and that's where these screws come in that we were just talking about with that fine thread. A tip here, when we're mounting the main brain, again, pay attention to orientation. I actually messed this up the first time and almost did it wrong. You wanna make sure that that stamped logo on the piece of plastic is right here with the logos the right way up so that you can read them. So this part of making this assembly, again, very easy to do. You only need a basic Phillips head screwdriver to even do this. And then as long as you pay attention to your orientations, you're good to go. Now I'm gonna move on to connecting all the wiring harnesses. From here, I just continue on making all those connections that are outlined in the directions. 
Now the most challenging part you're gonna come across here is once you've made all the connections, you need to kind of fold all the wire harnesses this direction. And then right here, you'll see that there's a tab that we can run zip ties through on the mounting brackets in order to kind of retain all the wiring here. There's a lot of connections going on here. And the thing is, it's so tight inside that Jeep dash, we really need to make sure everything is carefully folded up here so it is secured and not going to get in the way when we push this in. Overall though, still very simple so far. Let's get back into the Jeep to do the rest of the prep. The first step for this part is we need to unplug the stock USB connection that is inside the center console. We will connect the long version of the USB cable that they supplied, and this is one of the more difficult parts because you need to route the USB wire through the bottom of the center console here in order to tuck it along the side of the center console and go up front. And that's where I recommend having a long zip tie on hand. What you can do with this long zip tie is you can tuck it underneath the center console and kind of push it up so it comes up through this hole here. And then you can then use a piece of electrical tape, wrap it around the starting edge of this USB wire and kind of pull it down through, pull it until you have enough slack that you can then just feed along the edge going up front. Once you've got it through in the back, tucking along the side of the center console here is easy. There's plenty of room. You'll just tuck that wire up in. You tuck it up into this part of the dash. And then again, I recommend using the long zip tie. You can drop through this area inside here so that you can kind of pull the rest of the USB wire through. And now you can see we have access to it here. So next we are here in the glove box and here I'm making my CAN connections. The CAN connections are the vehicle's data bus, so we're actually talking to the vehicle over these wires through data. And what's important here is you wanna make sure that the green plugs are plugging into the white side and the white plugs are plugging into the green side. These wires have pigtail connections because some trim levels of this vehicle may have every single one of these ports already filled. And if that's the case, you can just unplug one of the factory's wires, plug it back into this pigtail, and then plug the male of the wire into the female. It's also worth noting that it doesn't matter where you plug these into the connections as long as you get the colors correct. I need to run that USB connection and the CAN connection up to where the radio will be, so this is another good opportunity once again to use our good old trusty zip tie. It's definitely gonna get tight behind the radio up there, so the excess wire that we do have, I'm gonna bundle up with a couple of zip ties and secure it up inside the dash. Next, we need to install this. This is the GPS antenna, and the antenna is going to mount onto this magnetic metal plate that we will peel the adhesive backing off of and attach in the vehicle. In their installation video, it's a lot easier to see where to put this because their vehicle had one of those retractable roofs, so they have a view from the top. You're gonna do it in this rough location right here on top that is metal, so it'll be on a metal surface. I carefully ran the wire along this pillar here to this point here at which it can then come down the A pillar. Now in the meantime, I also connected our additional microphone here. I've ran that wire tucked up into the headliner, that's easy enough to do, to this same point. So then I could run both of these wires together along this factory wiring path. And you can see that I've secured them in a couple of locations here just to keep things nice and tidy with zip ties. So those two wires will continue down this path here where they can then go across. And since we removed this lower panel earlier, we now have access to go across the bottom here. Now, while we're running those two wires, they'll meet up with this third wire here. This is for or an auxiliary chime speaker. This gives us some of our warning chimes depending on our vehicle features. So once all three of those wires are together, I can do just like I did on the other side of the vehicle using the zip tie to get them up to where the radio is. So here we have it guys. I've got those three wires ran to this side. I've got the USB and the data connection over on here. And of course we have all of our factory connections. Now we just need to make all of these connections connect to our assembly that we created earlier. This is pretty much the last major step and you're going to find that this is definitely the most challenging step for this process. There is a lot of different wire harnesses and wires and everything that need to be connected and they all need to fit back behind that already limited space. A couple of huge tips for you guys that are definitely gonna help out. If you remember, one of the wiring harnesses had a bunch of RCA connections for adding external amplifiers and sending the signal out of this radio. That wiring harness, I recommend kind of tucking it up 
in this spot of the dash. It's a longer part of the harness and you can kind of squeeze it up in there. And then the HD radio retention for the backup camera, that module, you want to tuck it down in here. It's going to kind of sit at an angle, but there's definitely enough room for it back behind this piece of plastic. There is no possible way that that module is going to fit back behind the rest of this. There just simply isn't enough room. Also, don't forget that you want these two wires to still be sticking out because these are what are going to actually attach to the screen so we can now get that mounted. So from there, we obviously reinstall everything in reverse order and we can start the vehicle for the first time and now we have our head unit installed. Now I actually finished the install here about a week ago. I wanted to spend some time using this head unit and driving around to really get used to all the features before I showed you guys in this feature overview. So first off, let's talk about how this head unit matches the OEM design of the vehicle and the fitment. I'll start with saying that I love the fitment of this unit. They've done a really good job matching up to the dash. There's no big gaps or anything like that. Additionally, even though this is a big screen, I mean, after all, look at it in comparison to the stock screen there, it doesn't look like it's out of place. It doesn't look like some huge tablet just got fiberglassed into the dash. It looks like it's meant to be. Speaking of looking like it's meant to be, check this out. If we go to the vehicle info, and if we look at this gauge screen here, I want to point out an important detail. Look at these gauges around the outside. See how it's these light little tick marks? If we look at our factory gauges here, they are the same. The reason I point this out is they did a good job of capturing the small little details of making this head unit look like it belongs. We'll talk more about that screen in a second, but let's go to our climate controls here. And this is another example. See this image here? This isn't just some random generic image with a steering wheel and four seats. This is actually a outline of the Jeep. You can see that that side panel matches, the dash matches, the seats look the same. I love this. It's actually an interior picture of what the Jeep looks like. The same is true on this screen here. If I open the driver's door there, you can see it opens up, but obviously that is a picture of the Jeep. Another thing that matches the OEM, it's actually pretty cool on the stock Jeep. They have an HD backup camera, but a lot of the aftermarket head units don't retain that HD. This one does. If I put it in reverse here, you can see this is full HD quality for backing up. So the Heighten with the integration kit definitely looks like it should be part of this Jeep. What about all the features that come from the factory, like the steering wheels? Is all of that retained? First off, let's check our steering wheels on the back side here. If I press the volume up button, we got volume. We can do volume down. We can, of course, on the other side, we can use the track select if we were playing a song and go back and forth between songs. We can switch between sources. All of the steering wheel controls work. Now, what about all the settings that were accessible for the vehicle through the factory OEM unit. If we go into settings and then we go vehicle settings here, you can see that this gives us all of our different options for everything we could control normally from the factory. So all of the door lock settings and everything else that the factory had. And as a side note, if you do have a Jeep that has the little auxiliary panel down here with the four auxiliary buttons, it retains all of those options as well. Check this out. There are also pack enabled settings, which gives us an additional option here. I wouldn't be surprised if they add more in the future, but we can make it have a memory of the auto start and stop button. Another thing I wondered about when I was researching this kit is I wondered if I would have to use this volume knob on the Heighten or if the factory knob would still work. Good news the factory knob works in full effect. In fact, all of these buttons work here. A lot of them are tied to the climate controls. So you can see if we do our temperature up on the screen, it's going up and down. If we turn on our steering wheel heater, not only does obviously the light still come on and we get a light there, it also shows us in our graphic what is going on. So watch, I'll turn my seat heater on. So that changes color. Another thing that's really cool here, if I switch between the levels, so let's say I go down one, you'll notice that it gets a little bit dimmer. I'll do it again. It's a little bit dimmer yet. Let me do it on the passenger side. I'll just cycle through, see how it's changing. So I love that that graphic updates. Everything is really easy to identify quickly on what setting it's on. Even if we turn up the fans here, it's going to get a little bit loud, but watch those little arrows. See how it adds more? That way we know 
Obviously, we can hear and feel that the fans are on, but we have a nice graphic representation. There are a couple down here I wondered about too. The mute button will instantly mute our audio. And if we did want to turn the screen off, we'll push that button and our screen goes off as well. Literally, the only thing that I have noticed is lost is if you see those little dashes up in the corner there, it will no longer tell you the compass direction that you are facing on this screen. This is actually pretty common for when you add aftermarket head units. It has something to do with the normal head unit will send that bit of data so this screen knows what to do. But in this case, that's the only little feature that I've noticed that I've lost. And even that really isn't a big deal because I can turn on my off-road setting screen here and you can see this gives me a heading. The final controls retention is we can still use our little media center here. We can plug in a USB disc like this loaded up with a bunch of music or videos or pictures and use those on the unit. But the media center here is only for that USB stick connection. If you want to connect Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you need to go into the center console to this connection. Next, let's talk about all the screen categories here. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail for the sake of time, so let's just blaze through these really quick. First of all, a pretty standard radio screen here. We can tune using this dial connection. We don't have to sit there and tap multiple times on the screen, which is really nice. There will be three different FM bands and three different AM bands, and in each of those three, you could obviously have different presets. Also, for general menu selection, you can always click this button down at the bottom, and you can actually customize what these different buttons are here, or you can click the home button in order to go back to this screen. Next, we'll go to USB, and I want you guys to listen for something when I press this. I don't know if you could hear that. There's a slight little beep noise, and that's something that can be turned on and off in the settings. You can adjust the level of it, but it is nice because you kind of get that feedback for when you're hitting each button. Now here in the USB screen, I spend a lot of time on this screen because I'm playing files from my USB stick down there. You can see that we get the album art. You could pause the track, obviously go back and forth. You can use this button here to navigate through all your folders, select your different songs. Everything is very intuitive and easy to pull up. Once you connect your phone to Bluetooth, you use the Bluetooth music button here, but that's not enabled right now because I'm actually plugged in and connected for Android Auto, but about the same settings there as USB. Our phone connection here will allow us to make a phone call. We can save favorites and it will load our contact list. I really like that this screen, everything is very large, very easy to punch in a number quick and hit call. Of course, Apple CarPlay, and in this case, we have an Android phone connected. This gives us all of our typical features like maps for navigation, Spotify. I have title on here. You can add different apps, of course, and we can also use the voice prompts. Okay, Google. Set a reminder for tomorrow at 8 a.m. to release the video. Your reminder for 8 a.m. is ready. Release. There's a ton of functionality with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto alone. I could go on and on, but one of my biggest favorite things about that is you can have navigation going while you're listening to a different audio source. So I could have navigation prompts while I'm listening to FLAC files on my USB stick. Moving on, there's Sirius XM, iPod. Neither of those are connected in this vehicle. Next up, if we go to cameras, keep in mind that doing this upgrade allows you to now attach up to four different cameras. Now, if you did have multiple different cameras, the button for them would be displayed down here and you could easily cycle through. And in the settings, you can also pick which one needs to be used when you do the reverse. This is a great screen for those of you guys that do off-roading because you could have the multiple different cameras easy to select between, and you can also have your off-road statistics going on at the bottom. We're going to come back to settings, but we also have the HDMI input and the AV inputs if you had those connected. We also have navigation. So the navigation here is different than what you would use with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. This is actually an add-on accessory, but what's nice about having this navigation is this isn't based off a cell phone signal. So if you do a lot of cross-country travel or off-roading where you might not have good cell service, it is really nice to have this navigation built in. I found that all the menus on this are very intuitive, very easy to use. And the other thing that's nice is you can pinch to zoom. You don't have to do the plus or minus by hitting the button a bunch of times. They give us a button here to turn off the display quickly if need be. And then this is the climate controls. I kind of showed you guys this already. And then finally, the vehicle info screen. The vehicle info screens have a ton of functionality. On this first setting here, you can see we get the overview of the Jeep along with all of our tire pressures. If there was a check engine light, it would show up over here and we could click it to investigate. 
if we go to gauges here, all of these gauges, we can actually cycle through them and check different parameters of the engine, and we can set up presets that have different groups of all these gauges. There's some performance settings here where you can measure your best zero to 60 and your last zero to 60 time. We have those off-road settings, which give us the pitch and roll of the vehicle along with our altitude, which is pretty cool. And if I turn the wheel a little bit here, you can see that tire angle changing. Drivetrain here also tells us our tire angle if we switch it and if we were to switch into four wheels drive you can see that this tells us and then finally we have some other user settings here we can control the last thing I want to go into is our settings here because this unit has a ton of different functionality we can of course set the clock but we have system settings here as well which gives us a bunch of different options we have illumination we can actually change the colors of these lights here to either match our dash or do a different theme we can change the background this is one of my favorite things because you can actually load in custom backgrounds from your USB drive so I have this one here that I like to use that has the CAF logo in the background different display settings tabs allows us to change that stuff at the bottom we can change all of our camera settings and we talked about it earlier we can also change our vehicle settings let's go to sound settings obviously we know by installing this head unit we can set ourselves up for a better sound system because we're giving ourselves the ability to have a sound output for our aftermarket amplifiers but even standalone if you were to do just this upgrade you can still get a great sound improvement you can see on this screen here, we could change normal settings as far as balance and fade go. There's a loudness setting. We can turn the subwoofer on and off for the subwoofer output, change phase, change the sub level. But check this out. If we go to equalizer, here on the equalizer screen, we actually have a 15 band EQ setting that we can use for the overall system. Now we could set this to be flat or we could actually have six different presets. We can do a pretty basic tune right here from the head unit. Additionally, there are crossover settings here that we can control the bandwidth of information that's coming out of each of our outputs but check this out this is my favorite thing the time correction if you're not familiar with what time correction or time delay is the speed of sound is actually relatively slow and since that speaker over there is further from me than this speaker that means that this speaker's sound is going to arrive at my listening position first so in order to correct that what I can do is I can plug in the approximate distance from each speaker to my listening location in this case on preset one I could do my listening location as this C and once I put in each of those values what it's going to do is it's going to make it so all these sound waves arrive at the exact same time which leads to a much better sounding system and as a side note I know somebody will say this well then you've screwed it all up for the passenger but what you could do is you could have different presets so let's say you really want to impress somebody you could have a preset that is set on this listening position or you could have a preset that is set with all the measurements between the two that way you get kind of the best of both worlds this is kind of neat too they have a little factory EQ setting here so this just gives you a rough EQ setting that would be popular for electronic music or hip-hop you guys can test that out and see if you like it for the most part I leave my EQ on my own little preset setting here don't forget though those settings that I just went over those aren't the only things that make this better for sound the built-in amplifier and sound processing inside of this unit is a lot better than the factory we also have those six four volt RCA outputs that give us the front outputs, the rear outputs, and the subwoofer outputs for aftermarket amplifiers. And this also has a digital toss link output built in. Also, don't forget this allows us to play those lossless audio files, FLAC files, and this also has aptX connectivity. So in summary, what are my thoughts on this upgrade? Well, first off, installation was extremely easy. Everything is truly plug and play. I didn't have to bust out my wire crimpers. I didn't have to get the soldering iron out. Everything just plugged right in. As far as quality goes for this full kit, a lot of you guys don't know this, but I have an engineering and manufacturing background, and I can tell you that based on what I saw here, the design team really went above and beyond to create an excellent product. As far as the features go, I love the integration of all of the factory settings. Now, in my opinion, this is the icing on the cake. The amount for this package is less than what it would have cost me to upgrade to that next screen size at the dealer. I now have an even larger screen than what the dealer offers along with all those features that we've covered. And my friends, it gets even better than that. Along with sponsoring this video, Stinger has been super cool and they're hooking up our community with a special offer for Car Audio Fabric 
fabrication fans. It's a limited time. You can learn details at the links down in the video description. I've been loving driving around with this stuff in the Jeep for the last week, and I have more plans for this build that I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys in the future. Now we have a great foundation to build upon. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video, and don't forget to design, build, and install.